Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, I will, yeah, continue a little bit the story I, I told uh, a year ago. Um, yeah, and this is, um, yeah, it's a Zoom. Yeah, okay, great. Um, I hope you can see my screen, actually. Can you? Uh, can you see the screen well? Yeah. Okay, and uh, as usual, this is also, um, yeah, the presentation is, is online, so uh, you can also look it up. And yeah, um, how my background is, as you may remember, uh, is also uh, material science. So it's really nice to have uh, also Irina uh, working on this topic and also came to the conclusion um, that, yeah, that um, the MetaWiki is a tool for science and also for not only humanities and, and literature or philosophy, but also for, for technical and material science. And yeah, last year I uh, yeah, presented you the KI Probat project, which aims to model the battery production with yeah, segmented building blocks and, and to enable researchers to collect information along the battery production value chain. And then we end up with a knowledge graph uh, for every battery cell that collects, um, for example, these images and measurement values. And it follows up the process steps from, yeah, over different stations uh, to the final product. At the end, if it's just untested, so you get the end quality of the product and you can make some correlation analytics with AI approaches which process parameter um, in yeah have an impact on the actual quality, and uh, re really comparable to what Irina showed, we had a lot of yeah you know semantic meter wiki uh, templates and a lot of deeply nested uh, template structures and and also page forms of course in place, um, which. Makes it really hard to scale this up and 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 adapt this to other approaches. So we were working on uh, better solutions for the implementation part, and this is um, what we did as a progress was the idea: what about if we find another way to describe data with schemas and have a also better connection with ontologies? And if we use an, a semantic beta wiki version that can just consume these data schemes and make them any application out of it. Of course, this is also, um, yeah, the philosophy of um, OpenCSP, which also has this idea of creating any system you need out of, of data schemes. I think it's just that we try to find a, a language for defining shapes or classes, however you call it, uh, that is not really depending on semantic reader wiki, but can be interpreted by semantic reader wiki. So that's the, the core principle. And yeah, this is um, what we came uh, around with. So we also talk about classes, um, as you already have here um, from different colleagues. Um, but in this case, and we also, of course, make use of the multi um, multi multiple slots that we have in a MediaWiki installation to keep uh, content separated from each other, meaning um, that we have, if we have a JSON data slot, there is where we put all the structured information and we have um, a schema slot um, for category pages that can describe the data slot of other pages. So it's kind of, yeah, it's another structured data slot. And of course we can have um, template MediaWiki templates and uh, the main slot also in place to use um, MediaWiki features as we know them. Um, and then we can build a kind of, a, yeah, um, let's say object-oriented and the inheritance-like structure. So we can have classes which are basically category pages and then other subcategory pages kind of inherit definitions from them. And then we have this individuals, so normal pages um, that just have data, but this data is then described by by the schemas of their parent classes of, of their classes and parent classes. 
And also the templates are used to render um, these individuals. So it's, yeah, definitely not, uh, also the idea um, already was presented, but the implementation is kind of, is a little bit different. Um, and we also have this feature that of course, you can also describe a class um, by another class, which would be a meta class as you know it from programming, um, that you can also describe the structure by another schema and or yeah, help by the construction of such classes or yeah, make it easier to for users to create new classes. Yeah. Um, so in in detail, um, the idea was already presented, but I can just um, show the most important aspects of of how this how how this is look like um, on the on the technical side. Um, so I skipped this because it's just yeah you have templates and you can represent them by JSON, but it's kind of limited. Uh, but it's great we have this multi content revisions um, that helps us to have just two slots for one one for wiki specific things and one for uh, for example JSON. And we just then add um, a specific slot, slot for describing JSON data um, by using JSON schema. And a JSON schema can then help us to render also a form. And this is what I want to show very briefly um, Yeah, on, uh, on another page. So we also write this as a kind of schema independently from our uh, approach. Um, and there's also a playground uh, which helps to um, understand this idea very quickly. So here on this side, you have a, a yeah a industry standard validated JSON schema. So it's nothing specific about a semantic reader at all. Um, there you have different properties like name, age, gender, and they can have a type like string, integer, Etc. can be enums of strings, etc. And there are already fancy libraries that build forms from it. So if I have a name here and it's a string, then I get a field for a name. So, and if I just enter, um, for example, the default value in the schema, and I will update this, then the form and uh, changes. And if I um, would change the name of the property in my schema, then yeah, it would also updated form. Um, so it's really great that we have a lot of tools out there to build user interfaces from, from schemas. And of course, they also can validate our JSON. Um, and what we did on top is, if we already have a JSON, why not um, also provide semantics to it? And this is what we put here. This is, of course, another standard JSON-LD, um, which makes any JSON um, yeah, possible to RDF. And this is a nice thing because JSON is for most people very familiar. There are a lot of tools, APIs you can use, but putting this context on top just makes it link data without you have to change the actual JSON. And this is then what we have on the right side. So people can edit their form. They actually create a JSON, which is displayed here. Um, but using the context we also defi defined, uh, meaning that we, for example, use the schema org vocabulary to express the meaning of the attributes. Uh, anyone who is interested in can compile this to RDF and gets, for example, yeah, um, RDF triples or can have a, a kind of a graph structure from this uh, properties, et cetera. So that's the basic idea. If you stick to this very broadly established industry standards, we can help make use of a lot of tools other people created. And so we do not have to recreate them. And of course, um, having a JSON on the one hand, which is widely known, and JSON-LD, which provides the bridge to link data and semantic web, um, could be a nice approach as what was what we had thought. Um, yeah, um, so in one, of course, we want to keep the connection or the capabilities of, of parsing, um, yeah, parsing uh, information. So uh, one important aspect is, of course, we have semantic meta in place. So of course, we want to use uh, the capability of semantic meta wiki to uh, write everything to a triple store 
we could use place graph right now, but yeah, you know, there is some change required. Um, but the idea is, of course, if I have a context in place um, that says my property here maps to a certain vocabulary, um, then I can use the JSON-LD context to make the definition what it means. And I can then use, we use then semantic beta we keep um, in a Lua script actually that actually creates this triple on the triple store. So semantic beta wiki in this case is interpreting uh, JSON LD files um, in, instead of writing um, the classic assignments in the wiki text. Yeah. And that's why, yeah, so we can keep this industry standard in place, which is understandable by everyone from the outside. But this um, Allure script, we are also capable to use this definitions in Metagreta Wiki so we can have our usual features um, as we like them. Yeah, um, and another option, so of course we can also use more slots uh, to provide templates to render something. And of course, if we have JSON in place, we can make use of the features of JSON that are that is a nested tree of attributes and arrays of, and of, of objects, etc. Um, but if you want to put, yeah, put something to a, cl a classic wiki template, of course, this does not understand nested values. So we have to create a flat uh, key value list. Um, and that's why we have this feature that we can yeah, enrich our schema, not only by the by the standard information, like uh, what is the type of a property. We can also put an evaluation template there um, that helps us to transform this JSON document uh, to make it injectable in a, in a wiki template. So this is nothing what uh, an external user would just ignore this because it's not meaningful for him. Uh, but if you want to render something with the same Mantic Vita wiki stack, we transform, for example, a list um, of values, so you cannot put this into a template directly, but we use um, both mustache templates in, in Lua and of course wiki text and Lua um, evaluations to transform this. So the parser just goes through the JSON and looks up in the schema. And if you find the evaluation expression, he transformed this. So for example, it makes from this list as a real array. Uh, of string values, it makes a string um, that is rendered in, in MetaWiki, uh, of course, uh, a list of links. So that's just a very basic example, but a lot of use cases you need to transform a JSON first to make it um, yeah, consumable by, by parser functions, by templates. Uh, could also be, for example, the GPS coordinates or could be a, a sub-object that has its own properties and you want to render this in a, in a nested list, for example. Yeah, um, so currently we do this all in Lua because it's yeah, very easy to handle on a, on a user side. Uh, maybe it should, would be better to have this in a PHP. Um, and we also have, unfortunately, some yeah, special slots that just call this Lua functions because um, technically, I did not see a solution to use parser hooks for this approach. Um, yeah, because any hook uh, I found would make would, would be able to make this content transformation has no information in which slot he's actually executed. So then things would be get uh, executed multiple times. Yeah, so it's a very technical problem, but um, this is a kind of a workaround to achieve the same result that every page is. Um, interpreted like this. Okay, yeah, so I think that's uh, enough from, from the very technical details. Um, yeah, but as I already said, this it, yeah, aims to build a kind of a bridge between uh, what we know from semantic beta wiki and link data world that we can have ontologies, um, RDF triples, um, but also a lot of people never heard of them and they are stick to JSON and JSON schema. And of course, there are, of course, there are also a lot of um, yeah, tools that can also make something useful from JSON schema, for example, to generate Python code. 
Um, so we can also use the same uh, structure to generate from our classes or category pages um, Python code. So for example, if we yeah, if you look here at the start page of this instance here, we have a, a graph from actually classes. Um, so we have this top level class entity and item is more specific and project is a more specific item. And we have also tools and we have person again. Um, so this is kind of a inheritance graph from top concepts to more specific concepts. And every, yeah. So every concept here is then um, actually a category page as we know it, but um, actually this this um, page has multiple content slots. So one is a JSON data slot that describes this uh, entity in general. So this is common for every page we have, and we have a JSON schema slot that describes the structure of pages that are within this category. Um, and these definitions are then passed um, through this in, um, inheritance tree. So this makes um, it easy to do not things twice, but if you if you have already a person in place and you want to have a user, you do not create a new person schema or new person class, but you just extend the existing person like you do in programming language, in yeah, object-oriented programming and um, you can also then, yeah, just reuse everything what is in place and just make a tiny extension of what you need in particular for your use case. And this also perfectly uh, translates them to, um, yeah, for example, to Python, um, because I think this is definitely also what Marcus in his um, talk uh, on the first day emphasized that we need to focus on actually make use of linked data and if you can translate this linked data models to python classes so this is just the equivalent of what we have seen in the wiki as python data classes and this can be completely automated generated from the json schemas and it's really easy to download and up yeah download wiki pages um, and handle them their structured content in in python um, to make yeah use of it in, in linked data applications. So this is, I think, a nice tool because if we, if we stick to the Mendy, yeah, to MediaWiki templates to encode our structured information, it's really hard uh, to pass this information out, um, yeah, especially for people that are not familiar with this technology. Okay, yeah. Um, Yeah, finally, this uh, leads to a kind of a, yeah ecosystem of, of tools. So we have all around this common uh, approach, JSON, which can be, we can model this with JSON schema and we can put semantics and ontologies on top with JSON LD. And then we can, yeah, make use of a lot of existing implementations that render forms from it, create op uh, API specifications create program code, um, create uh, triples that we can put on a, a triple store, etc. Yeah, so why still using Semantic Vita Wiki? Of course, it is a very good uh, system to have these multiple slots and put specific content in the slots. And of course, I do not have to tell you how many features we get from the software stack. We do not have to do them uh, on our own. Um, but in general, this approach allows, of course, that you do not have to um, know Semantic Vita Wiki in, de in detail to make use of the content we create because it's written in, in JSON and JSON schema. And of course, there is wiki text in place, but it's just for description um, created by humans. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, and to make use of this, of course, we also want to, yeah, make, yeah, share this, uh, this definition. So we have also a package repository um, containing a lot of, yeah, actually schemas. Um, so here we have, 
for example, the core schema having all the main definitions we need here. And there's for every page, just multiple files containing the information. So this is, and of course the JSON files and the JSON schema files are something that can be used by any other software. So it's not, yeah, bound to use MetaWiki for utilizing these tools. We can also, yeah, use completely independent software to, uh, to consume the schemas. And yeah, we use um, the page packages extension uh, to distribute this in our instances. Um, so we had, yeah, so it's just that you can install then a package containing multiple classes and then you can make use of them. Um, okay, and uh, finally, what is really then the difference um, in this approach and this will I also demonstrate a little bit. Um, so to make this really scalable well and um, getting around this issue of yeah renaming things and then you have keep to you have to keep track of every reference to something we completely stick to UUID. So every page you see um, is has a UUID. So there's no naming and a title. Um, that of course requires that we um, yeah respect the display title in, in every user interface component, uh, also in the search interface and also in um, visual editor tools, uh, which tend to stick to the page title and not to the display title, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we should, we add a lot of more tools to create, um, yeah, multimedia content in, in Wiki in the main slot for documentation um, and for, yeah, non-structured content. Um, we have this category class approach. Um, so our category pages are really data schemas on the one hand and um, render templates for the instances on the other hand. And they support also this nesting that they inherit the definitions and they inherit the rendering the templates from each other. Um, yeah, so every content is in a separate slot and it's, uh, yeah, serialized as JSON um, and the templates are not used for data storage. Um, and all semantic annotations are not, yeah, also done in this, in this JSON file by using this established standard, um, which can also be processed by third parties without any semantic media knowledge. Okay, and yeah, um, so if you want to, Play around. We have this, um, yeah, demo instance um, in place. We can also look in with an orchid ID. Um, and for example, we have here the schema of an electronic lab notebook. So it's also for our scientific uh, purposes that we need um, for research data management. Well, very well defined. Um, yeah structure data to document our results. And this looks like, um, yeah, the schema of this ELM entry is then used to create a form. So you can put here a value, um, but you can also access um, non-mandatory properties from the list on top, like, uh, yeah, banner, something has started um, and ended, for example. Um, and what is also very neat if you having yeah, linked data and also kind of a description of what is meant to be to go in a certain slot. Uh, so for example, you have here um, an action needs field. Um, this is actually a list of persons. So if you want to express who is involved in this experiment and this research, you can pick up existing uh, person like this demo guy here. Um, but the typical problem is if you do not find the person, so it's missing in the list, yeah, usually you would go um, back in another tab, maybe use the right schema, right class for this uh, entity, create this entity, and then go back to the form you are here. Um, but because we can also define in the schema what we expect for a class instance on this place, we can just create this person inline. So we click on this inline button. Now we jump. Um, in the person class schema uh, in the rendered form. And there we can, for example, create 
a new person, uh, give at least a name to this person. And we can also put a lot of other information that is particular specific for people. Um, and if you save this instance, it's saved as a another wiki page in the background. Um, but uh, the values so are actually UUID, but we see the, the rendered label is stored in the field here. So without really knowing it, um, I created a new entity in the background, uh, wasting no time in navigating to the right um, yeah, a button in, in the UI. Um, and if I have an existing user like the demo user and I click the same button, I can just edit it inline. So for example, if I found a mistake, want to update something, I can also use this feature to edit um, something in the, yeah, um, in existing entities. And technically this is not limited, so I can also make this in infinitely loop. So I can also then add the organization to the user and yeah, or yeah, a role or something like that. So there are a lot of uh, tools, a um, lot of attributes I can add, and I can also use here the inline feature and I jump to another schema. So maybe that's hard to track where I, in this level I am actually, but technically it's feasible. Um, yeah, and if I save my um, my entry, we can see what we, are, or what we have done. So we have created a new wiki page um, and we have created in the same time this my new person. So on the one hand, um, we can have directly jump to the new person. So this is what we have created in line without really recognizing it. This is also existing entity. Um, and we also have created this all as linked data because we can ask um, for action needs here in the graph. And we see both the existing one and the new one uh, are stored. And I can also here explore, for example, uh, follow the um, yeah the knowledge graph, actually what is um, the type of my entry and what is the type uh, of ELN entry, it's a class and what is the uh, superclass, it's a process and what is the superclass of um, um, person, this is item um, and items are an entity and processes are an entity. So this is kind of an ontology of the classes in the background. Um, so they are also very well defined and structured. And actually this is also what we see on the info box. So the first section of the info box is created from the entity. Um, there are only values displayed that are defined in the entity schema. And the next level is defined in the on the process level and the final level is created here. So this inheritance is then both data-wise, but also rendering-wise that we have um, the info box auto-aggregated from the inheritance schema. And this is of course the same for the person here. If we jump to the person, we see the same structure, but of course going over item and person um, and not over process. Simon. Simon, yeah, is, it okay, yeah. is it okay if I interrupt you because we have a lunch at uh, 12 and I'm yeah, really, yeah. Imp I think you are giving us a lot to study on. And when I think uh, about what we uh, talked about last year in Breda and where you are now, it's really next level. And uh, um, I really would like to give the audience the, the opportunity to ask questions or 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 am i interrupting your your presentation in a very right maybe give me one minute, one minute. Uh, yes and I, I'm, I'm done. yeah so to sum this up summarize this up so we we also have this main slot left and it works like you you know it uh, we just override some features like if you want to enter a media image you can um if you have a form that respects uh, yeah, the display title, so you can search for it, but you can also upload something in line as you know it. And this creates then a, um, a gallery for you. And you know, there are a lot of other features you may know from the last time, like having dry or diagrams and chemical formulas, etc., all in place. So this is 
like you know it, you can edit the main slot, like you know it, and the structured data keeps in its own slot and is rendered through the info box. And finally, um, my last words, using, if having this JSON in place, it makes also very easy to create a kind of apps. So we have, for example, um, yeah, um, a Kanban board that managed um, tasks in a yeah, in an interactive way, you can drag and drop things. And this completely operates on the JSON data slot. So it has no knowledge about semantic Vita wiki, but it can deal with JSON data. And so we can create nice apps. We also have a flavor that um, deals with requirements. We can sort requirements in different priorities and sort them to non-functional functional. Um, and we also have um, a platform where you can send your JSON data slot uh, to an API that makes some fancy scientific calculations from it. Um, uh, this is also easy because this API understands uh, Python. Um, and if you have already Python in your data slot, um, yeah, you can make, make use of a lot of uh, implementations. For example, this workflow engine here can consume Python parameters and makes put some results then back in, in JSON again. This also nice interconnection. So, but that's it. Yeah, thank you. On infinitely, and uh, okay, I, I I want I want a question for some. Yeah, Dietmar. Just a small one. Yeah. Is there some some more? Is there some more documentation or papers available on this? Um. Yeah. yeah, some. So maybe that's the main entry point. Is the link I, I sent you? Of course, we have some. Uh, we have GitHub repositories where all the code is stored. Um, we have not yet really a publication that uh, summarized this concept. We have a publication now going out, but this is already describing something we did in, uh, last year, so it's not up to date. So it, is a little bit distributed, I, I have to admit. But I can also try to point you to the right directions. But if you want to try out, it's, a, it's all Docker image. We have a Docker Compose file where you can just run this in maybe a half an hour and that you can play around with it. I, th I think some of us are going to do that. So, well, I don't see any questions, only uh, only some uh, faces that show that they are impressed and uh, need to study this. I like, well, I like a lot of this, you understand. Uh, but I'm going to thank you and we are going for lunch and we'll meet again at uh, one o'clock.